365, shake my hand, and, and yeah, good day. Look, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe and like if this information helps you in any way. If you're enjoying what you're watching, comment down below, right? I'll be very good with responding directly to you. But the video you're about to watch, right, is a snippet of one of my uh, uh, live class sessions. So we're calling them, you know, golden nuggets from class sessions. Things that I feel like everyone should know that they don't know, right? Uh, most of our classes are about two hours. So it's just a very short, small part of what happened that day. Right, see you in the next video. Shake my hand. Three, six, five. I saw on the private Telegram group, I wrote, I told people to look on the bigger time frame, right, that the price wants to drop. And I think people are identifying a, a buy opportunity in Euro USD. And I'm pretty sure I saw someone talking about a buy opportunity in gold. And my response was, look, man, I'm a bit tired, but I'm, I told everyone in the private Telegram that I'm inside a cell right now, right? I'm holding my cells. For this one reason right so we've entered mr that means demand here but i still see a sell guys when, when the trends are talking to you right and maybe you're excited about an area of value like this the best way to correct your decision all right uh, I, and let's go to euro usd and then we'll come back to gold and i'm sorry i'm, I'm just just because i've opened my my, my, my chats and I, I remembered i wanted to do a video around this the best thing to do so as not to get you see you see my my charts very detailed right i've got an area of value here i've got a glass effect one two that tells me i mark it red so this is a daily time from you i now know even if it looks beautiful even if there's a trend line to catch price here i'm not playing dumb i have already marked the only place I'm going to take a trade is if markets come back here because this is a downtrend, right? Price, if price is to bounce, so if price was to bounce here, this is, this is what I, I, I wonder if I ever come across great. If price was to bounce here and people started to buy, I still wouldn't have bought there. I would have watched them buy and come to me so I can sell again, right? But if you, if markets and the analysis gets overwhelming, all right, if, if markets and the analysis literally gets overwhelming, and I'm talking to this one, when you're now looking at your, your entry time frame and there's too many zones and too many lines, and you've also got a bias, Woo, be careful of that, a trader's bias. Trader's bias is very dangerous, right? It's absolutely dangerous. You don't want to always run by your bias. So if your bias is, I'm going to buy there, which I think a lot of us in the group I did tell you again, I am in a sell position Euro USD, but I saw people eyeing this for a buy. All right. If, if your bias is so strong, which is good because you need conviction in the market, please feel free to reverse engineer the trade one last time before you get triggered. Right. Make sure you're quick. How do we reverse engineer? We do a multiple time frame analysis backwards. Find it. If it's a buy place there, you must find a buy position. You must track the buying all the way to the governor. If you can't do that, it's wrong. Or rather, it has a low probability of working out. So, so when I was looking at this yesterday, I mean, sorry, so I'm, I'm going to move backwards one. So this is the weekly time frame. You can see here on the weekly, there's no ways we can buy from there. Maybe buy here. Right, so on the weekly time frame, maybe we're gonna buy there, but we haven't arrived. We haven't arrived, so there's no buying yet, right? So, so, so there it is. And then on the weekly, I'm already starting to think, well, what's cooking, man? What's cooking? Because if I look very carefully here, all right, and, and, and let me move out of this chart. Maybe too many lines and all that stuff will start to confuse you. I don't want to confuse you. Right, so let's come to a clean clean chart without all those extra lines. This is a clean chart without all those extra lines. Uh, maybe we can do a top an analysis approach. You guys are module twos, so I don't necessarily have to start off with major turning points and all that kind of stuff, which is extremely important. I'm going to deal with the most pressing thing right now. As a, as a trader, remember, after you've done your major turning points, you've done your profiling, you need to hurry now and come back and deal with what is the immediate area of value? Come on, somebody. Immediate area of value, right? Where is price now? 
This is what we're talking about, right? Peak supply, there. Rally, base, drop. Done. If, 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 I, if I get that gain inside the markets, I'm sorted. If I can get this, I am sorted. I now know that when price comes, price is going to sell, right? So peak supply, that's it. That's all I've done already to teach you. We can look at this 10 times in different charts as examples, right? But we're not going to spend the whole night dealing with peak supplies because the rule for them is simple. It's literally like a value-based demand. If I get a value-based demand, I know price will one day come back. Value-based demand, if my rules are met, price will then have to bounce because it is a strong demand. Supply and demand number five, turning points, right? But what I want to do now is to talk about where Euro USD is on the daily time frame. So my governor is selling right yes there is some type of an engulfment here right we'll talk about that right now we've got complicated 365 candles you see, you see all, all, all those order blocks here are, are, are kind of like signaling buy me buy me buy me and i always warn people against that be very careful right not every supply or demand is your friend sometimes they can set up what is known as a bear trap a bear trap is buy only so we can sell against you, right? Which is really what looked like is happening here. But nonetheless, price is returning back again into what could be a potential demand or a potential trap. But until price gives that power back to a demand, until this demand is in charge right now, and I guess it, one would argue that it is right, right now, Remember, you know, it's tricky because there are no three candles leaving, but we need a candle rule. We've got a, a bullish engulfing candle like this, all right? All, all these things we need to talk about in tonight's class. But let's say for argument's sake, we can see that price is leaving a supply. So supply is in charge. When we start to do our multiple time frame analysis, when we go to the weekly time frame, which is where we were, right? Because you can't take a trade on the monthly. So let's say you are convinced on the monthly, right? Let's say you are absolutely convinced on the monthly. Leroy, this is a demand. I don't know why you don't, why you doubt the demand. This is a demand. This is the first way you're going to draw the demand. So you want to buy. So you believe now price has arrived at an area of value where demand uh, surpasses supply. That's what you're telling yourself. Let's say you're correct. Let's say some of you might draw it like this. And if you do, that's fine, because this makes a lot of sense. You can see that price did respect this here and that this area of competition might be too far and wide. We, whichever demand you choose, this one or this one, you still have to do a multiple time frame analysis to get to a buyer's decision, right? So if, if, if you think your demand has not been activated, you didn't do an MTA, you go on the weekly. Look at this. You're in drawing this demand more accurately on the, on the weekly means there's a high chance you have to wait there. Is that not how we draw our demands? We do not have to wait for the lowest week. Our area of value would cover the lowest week right there. Okay. Okay, right there. And then all of a sudden, your area of competition will be somewhere right there. Okay, literally somewhere right there. So I'm going to write this down. Right. And then would you say your, your buy has been triggered? Right. To me, if you are right about this, first of all, area one being a monthly demand, yeah, you still have to wait to buy, technically speaking, if you're 100% correct. Because you, and unless if you're saying your account can handle, let's start off with the monthly, your account can handle about a 284 pip position, which is not that big, or your account can handle this then you're buying early, 177 people. It is also getting smaller and smaller. If your psychology can handle that, that's fine. Good for you. But what I'm seeing is the first time I can buy this asset is somewhere down here on the weekly, which means I'm going to have a risk size of about less than 100 pips, which is what I like. But that's not the only thing I'm starting to see on this chart. What I'm also starting to see on this chart is the fact that price turned right price turned and we might not have a strong supply yet right because of the makers or maybe we do let's zoom in guys anything that i say does not make sense you stop me i'm just treating you like the module twos that i know you are because you finished module one so so if i'm going too fast if it's not making sense you have to ask these questions is that area of value on weekly not a value-based demand The one I just drew, sir, this one here. This one here, buddy. 
This is, I'm on weekly. I just want to quickly respond to this question. Are you referring to this area of value here? If, 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 yes, if this is what you're talking about, the answer is absolutely. Yes, yes, it is. Well done. Good eye. Good eye. Uh, the, the, the only annoying part about this value-based demand is that we need to determine if this is what caused it, right? This very choppy, ugly area here that I wish I could just ignore because it's so ugly. But indeed, this is a value-based demand. Remember the rules for a value-based demand? Drop base rally. The rules for a peak support, rally base drop. So you are absolutely right, sir. This is a value-based demand. Thank you for that. I want us to focus on this area first, because remember on our governor, price is leaving a supply. So the part that I've marked right now is what might be another supply on the weekly, right? On the weekly time frame. First of all, we have to look left to understand what is causing these supplies, because if there's nothing on the left, then price is simply doing what? Creating an, an original turn, right? Don't forget that. Don't, don't graduate from module one too fast, right? So this is what we have here on the weekly time frame. I'm simply drawing all my weekly supplies. Let's go back to the monthly so it looks like. So this is what it looks like on the monthly. On the monthly here, I've got a very valid supply, right? I've got one, two, three red candles moving. I have a valid supply. So when this happened, fresh touch, made sense then price went down when this happens oh, oh retest what are the rules of a fresh touch and a retest a fresh touch is the safest trade a fresh touch is a guaranteed high probability setup a retest might come with more risk in terms of scales of probability but it makes more money if it's right a retest will move the most Okay, number one. Now, bearing in mind that by the end of tonight's class, right, by the end of tonight's class, a uh, 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 private video for 365 students, by the end of tonight's class, right, I would have covered this idea of engulfing patterns added to all of that. And here we have an engulfing pattern, 365 traders who are looking to buy the euro on the governing time frame, be very careful of that, right? It might not last, right? If dollar weakness stops, right, this will go back up. And this will now have completed class effect, right? So there are a lot of things happening at the same time. Our job is to understand the flow of money. Which area of value is going to give in first? Our glass effect here is done. I mean, there's all the, there's the there's the debate about half this area of value needed to be depleted. So I'm just going to show you half. Remember, if half of my order block is is touched or exhausted, then I don't even trust it even more because there's little money left in there. So price hasn't arrived half of the order block, but price is getting there, right? It's it's, it's done in once. So I've got a big bearish engulfing candle here on the monthly time frame. I've got this weekly setup, which we've been already informed by, by, one of our, by, by one of us in the room here that actually, dude, isn't that a value-based demand on the weekly? Correct. Now, if I look at this supply carefully, it's not a strong supply. It's not the type of supply I would like. And I'm referring to this turning point, this one here because price leaves, gives us one candle, comes back in and then the other two, right? So it is a supply, but it's not super strong. And then price pulls in for, for, for a fresh touch and drops, and then now price comes back now for a retest. As price is retesting this weekly supply, which is inside the monthly supply, price turns, right? So every turn that we see in the markets, we need to investigate what's going on. Is an order block inside an order block? Do they increase their sell positions? Are they reaffirming that they really, really want to sell? We want to be crystal clear about that. Because the more clear we are about where price stands, the better we are, right? So there's a turn here. This is the highest part of the turn. This is the most reasonable body in the turn, which means this is candlestick one, okay. Candlestick two, okay. Candlestick three. So on the weekly time frame, I have my imbalance rule met, which means I now potentially have a new confirmed supply here, another area of value. Right, I've got a new confirmed supply here. Poten so, so, so Euro USD to me is building pressure upon pressure to maintain the governor's position to keep selling. So 
Those people who are trying to buy right now on the daily, and so far we haven't seen confluence, right? Where price is today, and, and, and I'm saying, I'm going to share this with, with the students as well. I'm, this is for everyone. This is not going to go publicly, but this is for us in the private group. I want you guys to, if you already bought before I could respond, or you bought based on your own analysis, do not forget the basics. The basics are built a lot with rules. There is no confluence at this level here on the weekly time frame to buy, right? I, I'm not, a price could very well come back up there, but just so you know, they've already taken you out on the daily, depending on where you put your stop loss. So they'll take you out and come back up. If price comes back up, what's my first thought? Yes, glass effect is done, right? So this area of value here could break. Price could be coming up now to rage, to, 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 to violently move up, sure. But for those of you who finished the course and for those of you in the room tonight, by the time we are done, you will learn that if you ever get a bearish engulfing pattern, okay, rule number one, or a bullish engulfing pattern, right? Price always comes back to retest it. Right, so price will come back up here to retest it, right? So they'll choose the candlestick behind it, next to it as a reasonable take. If there's a supply there, that's what's gonna turn price down again. Price generally likes to come back and retest bearish or bullish engulfments, right? So so if, if you're trying to buy, hoping to go with the with the test, they they, they punished you, right, with the, with the liquidity rate. But anyways, let's stick to this thing process by process. Uh, process with multiple time from analysis. So I've got my value-based demand here, right? This is a B. And I'll talk about a lot of these things in tomorrow's world, value-based demand, or let me say this weekend, value-based demand, right? But price to me has not arrived at a place where I can safely sell. Now let's go see what's cooking on the daily, right? So here we are now on the daily. Here we are on the daily. And I think this was the level that everyone was looking at, or not everyone, but those wanting to buy. Number one, number two, it's a very similar level with gold, because remember, Euro USD, like Mr. Lamini correctly said, has a lot of correlation with gold, like massive correlation with gold. And remember, a lot of this stuff has to be inverse at some point. So for example, dollar and gold have an inverse relationship. So this order block on the daily here, you should find something similar on gold. I think, as if I'm crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, see there? Very similar. Tell it, oh, no need to do that because I've already highlighted it. this green. Where price is right now, price has entered. But you can tell where price, which area, which order block price got to first, right? You already can tell here that price has already entered here and is now trying to bounce up, right? I'm on the day. But let me not get ahead of myself. Let's, let's take our analysis one step at a time. Right, so we're still on the, oh, let's go back to the weekly. This is what we have here on the weekly. It's difficult for me to see why I would buy now on the weekly because I have not yet arrived at an order block. We only buy at a valid supply or a valid demand. Someone in the room has already identified a value-based setup. So the only time I should buy is when price comes to me, right? So I'm buying here. Therefore, I know that I have secured the logical low, the lowest low that I can actually get in that particular deal, right? This more drop needs to happen for before someone like me is even convinced of buying, right? So I haven't even closed my sell traders off yet, but today is Friday. So I'll probably lock profits. So I'll put a stop loss somewhere up here, just above here, right? At about 10 p.m. In case markets gap up, right? Because they want to retest. In case markets decide to come back because they want to sell at this supply, I will make sure I'm protected. And then if I get kicked out of this in profits, I'll then come wait for price here. The only time I won't sell here is because I now believe that the buyers have taken over by my analysis, all right, by my analysis, right? Why do we keep coming to my live account? Let's go back to Saxo. Guys, so far clear, temperature check, so far clear? So far clear, I know I did start off with peak supplies, but I thought, let me just quickly address this. Let me just quickly address this for the class. Right, so, so, so temperature check, everyone in the room, is that clear so far? Are you guys good with that? Am I making sense? on euro usd the setup what's going on because those are the kind of decisions you have to make every day when you're looking at these charts you have to kind of like 
draw from the broad concepts, keep narrowing it down, bring all the rules, bring your entire toolkit and analyze this thing. Right. So, so, so here we are on the on the weekly. Um, is that a question? Does someone ask a question? Mr. Kinyunya, I don't know if you're talking, sir, or your mic is on mute, or you want to ask a question, but... Oh, okay. Looks like he's unmuted himself. Awesome yeah. analysis. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Right, but... but... But, but that's that's the that's exactly all right cool so so that was not a question cool let's move on right so so there we are on the weekly but I'm, i haven't price hasn't come to my value based demand i am selling because price came to a peak supply do you understand that's why i'm saying i'm saying because price came to a peak supply i'm not yet buying because price has not yet arrived at a value based demand so now we drop to our time frame daily if you're new to the course, which you guys are about to finish the course, your first three to six months, please don't feel under pressure. Grow your account as a swing trader. Less mistakes, longer process. I'll tell you now, it takes longer because you have to wait for these setups. But because you have to wait, price gives you the chance to reanalyze your decision. A lot of people want that intraday fast money, but they forget that you actually lose more if you're not taking the time to correctly think through price. Eight years in the game, and I still like taking my time in the markets. I, I make more money swing trading like this. So daily entries are good for me. So here's the logic now. Let's say FOMC didn't talk three days ago, two days ago, two days ago, right? Let's say there wasn't a, a big news release that strengthened the dollar. Let's say it was just another ordinary day in the markets. Let's go back to the basics. What are the basics? The basics are we're supply and demand traders. The basics mean we want to buy low, sell high. We do this because that's what the banks are going to do. The banks are going to do it because they are market creators. If they are market creators, they are trend creation creators train creation is only done at supply and demand number five which is turning points which is where you locate your peak supply or your value-based demand now okay so with all these basic things that we drilled into our system in module one when you look here you've got a talitha area but the talitha area is so close so close to a turning point Which is which? Which one are you going to take? I would put my money on the turning point nine out of 10 times. If I buy on a Talitha area, in terms of trading psychology, it means a couple of things. You see, this is how big this area was on the weekly. Now I'm reducing it even more on the daily. I want to cover, you know, I, I want to make sure I get as, as much as I can or as low as I can, but as equitable as I can. So that means I don't want to spend too much money on a big area of value when I have a small account. Sometimes the more accurate I become, the smaller my area of value becomes, right? Which means the more money I make, right? So if price comes all the way down here. Now, when I want to put my, my area of competition on this turning point, it's quite interesting because what I have now is price dropping into an area of value, then price trying to come up. As it's coming up, there's also a 365 candle here. So what would I do? What would happen if price did this? Price could, could come here and then decide, you know what? This 365 candle is close enough. It's close enough, let's go, right? And it doesn't come down here. Well, what would happen, right? You, 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 your order would essentially not get filled. And if you look at where this 365 is positioned, and I know someone is saying, but Leroy, I don't think the imbalance rule was met. I think you're correct, but let's finish tonight's class. And I talked to you about these engulfing patterns, right? And why they're important. Because if you look very carefully where this 365 candle is situated, you go back to the weekly. It's the same place where your value-based demand, you see this line there? I'll make it red. Your value-based demand on the weekly time frame, right? On the weekly value-based demand on this weekly chart right there. You see, that's how you draw this area of value. This would be the size of your reasonable body. That, and you never take a trade inside an area of value. You never put your stop loss inside your area of value. The stop loss is just a little bit outside, 
your buy is just a little bit outside. So if this is what you're looking for in the markets via multiple time frame analysis, that means by the time price gets to your daily time frames, you're doing your MTA, you will realize that there is a big need for you to leave this area of value intact like this. Yes, you could be lucky and reduce it like that. And actually price comes in. That would be very helpful because your the smaller your area of value is, the less of your account you're risking. But there is a very high chance that price could simply just stop there. Why? Confluence. Price has arrived at a weekly demand, which correlates with the daily demand at 365 candle right there, which is sitting literally on top of a value-based demand daily, which makes part of the value-based demand weekly does that make sense so it's very important you're reading your key levels like that so personally um, um, um i'm still selling i'm still holding like i said i'm gonna put my stop loss here somewhere there to lock profits but i was hoping to get out of this sell trade just above this 365 candle here all right so somewhere normally i'll put a, a tp just above the engulfer here because i know for a fact that for me to qualify as a dumb trader is for me to buy is to keep selling inside a demand because the people want to buy here are getting ready to buy low okay but 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 this is it the other thing i wanted you to, to bring up as I was talking is, I hope you've also noticed that the supply on the weekly has created, uh, this turn has created a new strong supply, right? I'll make it white so you can see it, right? So there's a, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of sell pressure on this chart. That's all I'm saying right now. And yes, it's because the dollar is kind of like back up again, very strong. So Euro is falling apart, et cetera. Last thing on this particular chart, I'm gonna teach you guys about indexes as we go along in the course. But for the students who are gonna watch the video later on tonight, this is your, 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 your index, right? We spoke about this. So, so you see, we had already marked out where to buy. We still have a long way to go. I don't know whether I did this in a class or, 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 or in a particular um, 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 war room or whatever it is, but there's a real, real bottom here of price. Let me just remove this, right? Where all of this is waiting to hold. So I would still hold to buy euro. I am holding to buy euro for the exact reason why, because I know where I started to sell and I know where I want to exit, right? So I'm going to exit somewhere there. If something happens next week, I'll then be kicked out in profits, right? But there's a gap. Alex once asked about the gap. This is a pro gap. There's already sell momentum, boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, when, when the FOMC came out and announced, said what he said, and dollar became very strong. Look at your index. Your index is gapping down, right? So what's going to happen? You're going to see something like this on Euro USD, right? Uh, your price will hit some demand or start to turn. And as it's going up, all of a sudden on Euro USD, you won't understand why. Why is price stopping? It will just go up and stop. There is sell pressure here. Remember I said to you guys, gaps are the biggest imbalance than, than anything else. So it's first a gap, then it's value-based demand and peak supply. When you're talking about strong imbalance movement, this is a strong imbalance. These guys want to go down. So you see there, if you look at the Euro index, there's a gap. But if you look at Euro USD on the daily, you won't see a gap per se. I don't think there's a gap there on the daily time frame. There is nothing, right? There is nothing there. There's a gap somewhere here where they broke the last demand. For them to break a demand, they have to have extra sell pressure. That's why the index gaps for, to the downside. On your broker's chart, your broker won't tell you all this information. But if you look very carefully here, I'm going to do this. I, I, I really don't know yet. I haven't checked. But, but, but being in the markets for this long, I'm pretty sure there might be. Somewhere in here is a strong H4 supply. Where, where the gap is on the index, the EXY index, somewhere in here. So what I said was on the index, I wouldn't be surprised if price maybe turns here and starts to go up and out of nowhere stops and then comes back down again. Because I think somewhere in here, there is a strong supply that was created that, that that participated in removing this demand there. Let us see. I'm gonna go H4, then I'm gonna go daily. There it is. There it is. I just said it. Somewhere in there, there's a strong supply. There, there's another bearish engulfing pattern on the H4 time frame. This this is what intraday institutional traders are going to trade clearly. 
right? There is complicated 365. You, you guys know these supplies. You know that that's a 365 candle there, or you could call it a Tritha area, but there's a bearish engulfing and it gives you three candles. Everything is there. Then there's another one now. They just broke another demand, right? This is where price is today. Guys, I hope I'm, I want to reach over and make sure everyone is following me. This is where price is right now. If you go on the daily, this is, a, this is the order block that they've removed. They've taken out this Talitha area here. Inside here, they had to generate an immediate quick supply for the day. Somebody added juice here. Look at that. Three, four hour candles, right? Order block, order block, order block. Then one, two, three going down. So price could come up here and then go back down. Price could come up here, range, break, come up there and then really go back down. They, for me right now, I am nowhere close to touching a buy. Then you, could, you could be profitable, but you're buying a, a sell setup, right? You're buying just like Bitcoin right now, right? Everyone is like, oh, Bitcoin got to 40K. Look at the chart. It's a sell setup. It's a sell setup. It's not going up for too long. If it does, there'll be something big and fundamental that will create a big original turn at the bottom. But right now, as we speak, when we're looking at our charts, we're looking at sell setups. Okay, sell setups, right? Guys, let me, let me stop here with just Euro USD. Let me zone out as quickly as possible. Uh, um, 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 and then let's this, this go back to the program of the night. But I just thought it was so important that the stuff that we, people are talking about in the Telegram group, you must support those students who are brave enough to kind of like put out charts and put out ideas, um, ask questions, because it also gets them thinking. It gets them re-looking really the ideas. One day after the course, that will also be you. You will also be in that particular place in life where you want someone to comment on your chat, where you want someone to go, yes, it's a good idea. Idea. No, it's not a good idea. So please, uh, you know, stay engaged there. All right, because the, the more you guys talk to each other, the more stronger your own community is going to be. Like Leroy can't drive everything. I can't do the teachings during the day, the academies stuff at night, the corporate stuff during the day. It's, it's just too much for me to also be 100% 24/7 on the on, on the online platforms. Right, it will get very tricky very fast. So it's you guys who are all empowered with the same amount of information. The difference is all of you spend a different amount of time in the chat. That's the experience you guys are gonna be drawing from each other, if that makes sense, right? So once again, guys, tonight we are talking about peak supplies and I think the rules for peak supply are simple, right? So I'll just quickly scale down, do two more charts. So it's just a pound USD still falling, right? And this one is like, I mean, if I'll teach you fib and when the day I do, you won't want to do anything else on the charts without a Fibonacci.